Welcome to Moscow. Hi, I'm Mike Milbury. I've seen some amazing things in my 20 years in professional hockey, but nothing quite like I've seen on this trip. Five years after the first Russian players left for North America in careers in the NHL, they've come home, and we've come with them. They've shown us their hometowns and given us an inside look at the system that produced them, a system which ultimately demanded too much from them. This is their story. The Soviets first came on the international scene in the early 50s. From the very beginning, they have dominated. Their success has been the result of a strict and demanding training system. Children start training at an early age. These kids skate six days a week. No one tells them it's just a game. The coaches here are paid professionals. They'll work with the same group from age six to 16. If the training is tough, the facilities make it even tougher. They're archaic. The stuff we do have in the States is, is 10 times better. As you can see, the showers, they're quite different here. You turn the water on and it sort of comes out in just a stream. That's a tough shower right there. At the top level, players are given only one month each year away from the game. The ultimate goal was once a spot on the national team, but it came with a price, freedom. The system made you train three times a day because they feel like they owe you and uh, I shouldn't say that, but you know, the, we didn't have a personal life. Yeah, it's my, it's my first locker room. When I came from Twin, I started playing yeah. here. I was like uh, those guys here and yeah, I, maybe lots of memories because it was my first steps in hockey, you know? Steps that led Darius Kasparaitis to the New York Islanders, where he would battle the giants of the NHL. First, he had to fight his way to the top of the Soviet system. He left his home at 14 to join the KGB club, Moscow Dynamo. The first year was difficult, and he ran away from the club, back to his home in Lithuania. His mother convinced him to return, knowing that staying in Moscow would be better for his future. I was crying for two, like, two, two weeks, and after that, I just gave up. We spent here 11 months a year. Now it was like, it was like everything, house, our house, our, it was our life here. It was for me like jail, you know? I was afraid, coach. You know, if I see coach over here, I just be quiet, you know, like a little bit. All guys was afraid of coach. If your coach catch you, you go out, and uh, I'll maybe catch you with a cigarette, I don't know. You can go in the army. Here we're working out lifting weights, lifting weights in the summertime. Here we're playing tennis or little soccer games. It's a kind of mess right now, you see. This is our locker room. It used to be nice here, nice and nice, nice and clean. Right now it's a little bit messed up. This stuff, you see? Here's my seat right here. I used to sit here. Best seat in the, in the house. Here you see Jamnov from Winnipeg Jets. Jamnov. Kovalev. No, Kovalev sit here. Kovalev from New York Rangers. You used to see me and Kovalev here together. Alex, Alex, Stanley Cup champion. Did you happen to see their drying room and stuff like that, how they dry their equipment? You put your stuff, hockey stuff, it's hot here, you see? And you put all your stuff, skates or... Take this and... Uh, oh. When you take shower, you put like this. Put like this in the shower and you wash with a soap. I want to see my room. Maybe it's maybe it's a little bit messed over there, you know. Coach, coach, one coach used to live here, and if you go late, you walk like this. Coach used to live here, and we go quiet. Yeah, it's still all right. It's my room. It's still my stuff here, you know. Look, oh my God, it's my stuff. You know, the stuff, all the stuff, Viking cup. My bed right here. He used to sleep here. And all this, I did this stuff. I did this car, hockey cars. 
Merci. Merci. Kasparaitis now has his own NHL card. It's his first visit home in three years. There have been some pleasant memories, but this trip has also reminded him of why he left. Here in this country, you need to be quiet, and only just shut your mouth and just do your work. I feel lucky, yeah, I feel lucky because when I take on a bus with the team to the practice or to the game and I, saw, I see people on the streets and, and I just feel lucky because I have life, I have a good life right now, you know, and thanks God for that, you know. Recently, Darius took a close look at his life and realized he could no longer hide from a drinking problem. This summer he joined Alcoholics Anonymous and got his problem under control, in the United States at least. And I, I think if I stay in this country, I, maybe again, I gonna still, I gonna start drinking again. I think because it's so, it's so depressed here. You know, it's nothing to do, and uh, it's just no, no future in this country. And I'm telling myself right now, like I never come back anymore in this country. Never, it's 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 never. Stay with us. Up next, he risked everything for freedom. Slava Fatisov's battle with the system. In the middle of my workday, I don't do power lunches. I do power lifts. 